Oh, wait, hold on. Why wouldn't it work? All right, I think we are live. It hasn't loaded yet on the YouTube page. Yeah, it takes a couple seconds. All right, hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us. I'm Leah. I'm Sarah. I'm Val. I'm RC. Hi. Stop hello. doing that. <laughs> Welcome to our live show of the stars and the blackness between them, which I just finished. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, Reagan's already roasting me for that. So. Leah, no, I got on the stream, and Leah immediately went, "Don't talk to me. I'm finishing the book." <laughs> I literally I finished like with me. I finished forty minutes ago, and. Wow. Like Leah messaged at a part that I was at like 40 minutes later. And I was like, Leah, I just finished. How are you gonna finish this? I did it. I No, so last time we streamed and we were talking about this, I said, I'm going to be the last bibliophile to finish the book because generally I overestimate how quickly I can read contemporary. I was the first person to finish this book. I, I think I started kind of unfinished before anybody else started. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Chanel. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody look at Val's eye makeup, though. Oh, God. That's okay. true. Beautiful. Thank you. Val, you should drop the drop the routine as your first video. The, yeah. I well, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what did everybody think? I well, love do we want to start with ratings? Yes. Okay. okay. I gave it five stars. <gasps> Did you really? <laughs> okay. Okay, I'm going to preface this by saying generally. Oh, no. No, 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 no. No, no, no. Don't own oh, no me already. <laughs> Listen for now. I don't, don't want to um, Generally, I'm just not very drawn to contemporary most of the time. Mm -hmm. um, so this was like kind of at like a 3.5 ish for me. Like I really, really enjoyed the writing style, which we'll get into. Mm -hmm. But it made me feel dumb sometimes. <laughs> I keep going back and forth between a 4.5 and a 5. But if I was on Goodreads, I would just rate it five stars. Mm -hmm. So, Hallie. <laughs> I don't like comparing books to other books, mm -hmm. but oh, God. if I have to compare, this feels like the contemporary fifth season and oh, wow. like the feelings that it gave me, the way that it's written, the like layering, the way that the story is told, because it's told mm -hmm. in a very unconventional way. So mm -hmm. I gave it a five out of five. Well, I technically haven't rated it yet. Technically, I haven't put on Goodreads or um, I also Book haven't Slut, put I read it on it. Goodreads yet because I finished well, it ten minutes ago. <laughs> yeah, no, Leah hasn't technically finished it according to Goodreads, but we've also <laughs> like we don't let each other know no. How, what am I trying to say? We don't let each other know our ratings before yeah. the, the live show happens. We don't? No. Apparently we're not supposed to. That's why you press the no rating button on Goodreads. <laughs> not me yeah. going to go change the Felix rating. <laughs> okay, I feel like... Okay, I feel like that's different, that's though. different. We read it before we agreed to do it as a book. Yeah, most of us yeah. have already read it before we agreed, yeah. so I feel like that's... I feel like most of us already know what everyone rated it. So for that one, we'll just have to mm -hmm. yeah. know that. I and avoided reading it on them. I also really like RC's threads. Yeah. I I really really now, that now that I finished the book, I can go read. And after this live show, I can go read RC's thread about it. Mm -hmm. People seem to really like my threads, which is why I've started doing them. I'm like, OK, yeah, if y'all want to <laughs> see my experience. Because you're very stream of consciousness. Yeah. We're all we're all gonna roast RC here. <laughs> I I like no like two rules and it's um don't put spoilers in the group chat and don't, don't discuss the book in the group chat. But only in the group chat. It has to be fresh. I just want it to be fresh. <laughs> no 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 and I totally no I get that shit. And honestly, yeah. one of the reasons I like doing the reading threads is that it stays in my head fresher. Because mm -hmm. I'm the kind of person who like 
Okay, so I, I talked about this with Leah when we watched Clueless with Chanel mm -hmm. and Val. And like, if I don't write down like my feelings about a book or vlog my experience about a book, mm -hmm. I forget everything in that book. And I forget how I feel about that book nine out of 10 of the times. Mm -hmm. So from like the scientific standpoint, like psychologically, you're actually way more likely to remember things if you write them down. Oh, yeah. Sarah coming in with the science. I know. Uh, <laughs> Regan said, I used to do it with Glee. Glee. <laughs> oh, Glee. Was oh, it Glee. just hashtag fire Mr. Shoe? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> do we want to talk about our favorite scenes? Because I have a few. Oh, oh yeah. Val, do you want to start since you suggested it? Um, okay. There's a scene at the beginning of the book where, is it Audrey? Audrey, yeah. See, I, I, I did audio and physical. Audra, like, because Audra Lord's name is like Audra Lord, but yeah, apparently it's Audrey. I actually started with the physical and the audio because I was having a hard time getting into it because I've hit a weird reading slump where I can like only read audiobooks. Yeah. Um, but then I realized I was going too slowly and I wasn't going to be able to finish. And by that point, I had really gotten into the book because the audiobook is really good. Mm -hmm. um, I'd really gotten into it, so I switched to just physical, but I did listen to a little bit of the audiobook and really enjoyed it. Were you going to say something about the pronunciation of the name? No, I was just going off RC's comment about the audiobook. <laughs> I thought you were going to be like, actually, it's pronounced this <laughs> No, RC, re RC read the audiobook, too. <laughs> See, here I am being like, oh, yeah, it's Audrey. And then Leah's like, hold on, let me put in my two cents. <laughs> I just wanted to make a comment about the audiobook. <laughs> Can we get to Val's scene? <laughs> go, go, Val. <laughs> it's okay. It's fine. There's a scene at the beginning of the book mm -hmm. where it's pretty much the catalyst for the book where Audrey gets discovered with her secret girlfriend at the church. Mm -hmm. And that's literally something that happens in my book. Mm -hmm. So I was so surprised because the way she wrote the scenes and the way she compared their relationship between like their relationship and the church and Mm -hmm. Just all that, it was so good. And I was like, I'm never gonna be able to make this, like recreate this. I tried, but she's much better than I am. So that's what made me cry. Oh, it I was, was sobbing. It was very like visceral in my opinion. I really, really love the writing in this book. Yeah. 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 Every time like the church stuff came up, I kept thinking of like the fucking, like uh, there's a Haley Kiyoko song. And like it's her talking about like her experience with like being queer and also church. Yeah. I'm just laughing at. There's a Haley Kiyoko song. <laughs> there's a Haley Kiyoko song. <laughs> okay, but there's a Haley Kiyoko song for like everything sapphic. Yeah, that's so. what I love. <laughs> <laughs> to talk about lesbian Jesus for a second. Um, but yeah, like I just I I loved that scene so much, and I like the fact to go off of like how Val's bringing it up that we only see this character for like maybe two or three pages in the beginning, and I completely yeah. felt the romance. Oh my gosh! Oh, I I literally okay. I literally yeah. wrote down so many I'm lines getting emotional. from the beginning. I was like, this isn't even. I know this isn't even the romance that's the focus of the book, but like. No, but it's important, and that's the thing, yeah. because without this mm -hmm. romance, you would not have the book. Yeah. yeah. And, like, when we talk about, because we've talked, we've talked about tropes a lot. Mm -hmm. yeah. And when we talk about tropes, I don't think any of us has ever mentioned the, like, hidden secret romance. Mm -hmm. But this was, like, mm -hmm. you felt it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I want to cry. Yeah. I Dude. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, it's okay. Yeah, I agree with this comment about the spirituality in the book. Yeah, yeah. spirituality was so good. Truly her own form of church. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. I wrote down several lines about that because I was like, like I'm not even that religious and that's so still got to me. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I felt the sermon through her palm. Listen, it's okay. It's fine. I wrote that down. I wrote down, this is my real church. Yes. No. Yes. Like, 
Those lines. That's a direct quote from my book. I was so shook. Yeah, I. It was so beautiful. There were so many quotes. Mm -hmm. I actually, I really want to get a physical copy now so I can reread it and yeah. like tap it because. Me too. Same. Mm -hmm. The way that it's done physically is really, really, really like, beautiful. I love the way it's split into like quote unquote seasons, but it's like yes, astrological. I know. Yes, I know. And this like th they're not necessarily like horoscopes, but you still feel like as if each poem that is told somehow relates to the sign that it's about. Yeah, which I really loved because I'm a Taurus. <laughs> Same. <laughs> oh yeah. I like how both Hallie and Reagan are now like, oh, I wish I read the book. <laughs> <laughs> Still read like, it, even though we're going to be going into spoilers, because yeah. like I've read the whole book and I want to read it again. Like yeah. I think it, even knowing the story of the whole book, it's still you still might get something different out of it than mm -hmm. we did. Yeah. And just the writing. Mm -hmm. Like amazing. The writing is so well, like it's so beautiful. It's so so well done and i like the fact that like in a way it's like it's like lyrical and like you can interpret it as you like oh god mm -hmm. Reagan. <laughs> yeah i like the astrology stuff honestly mm -hmm. i don't know that much about astrology mm -hmm. but i found yeah. it really interesting yeah also hallie says she'll forget the spoiler <laughs> don't forget the spoiler <laughs> mood i love that <laughs> um i just found in my notes in all caps Love was all we knew how to do. I am gonna cry. It's Literally, okay. the first romance like had me crying. I was just like, this this sapphic goodness. Like, so we can, good. does anybody mind if we jump ahead a little bit? Still talking about the first romance because the letter that she gets. Okay. <laughs> oh, <it's> okay. <laughs> oh, I'm oh, <laughs> Yeah, no, the letter that she gets. So she she gets the, Audrey gets this letter mm -hmm. from her first love, and I'm she's like, cry again. "I am I've basically she's run away from home. Mm -hmm. She's living in an apartment with a bunch of other queer people, and she <gasps> asks her to come to her, and like they're like she's like we can have a life here, and some part of me was like, <gasps> let it go. <laughs> I know <laughs> was who. Uh, it was so good." I wrote down so many quotes from the beginning of the book because the romance was so, like, perfect. Yeah. Uh, let's see. We study the Bible by the ocean for three months. Uh, I enjoyed everything about life because I was thinking of, is it Neri? Neri, I think. Neri? Yeah. Neri, yeah. Neri. But. It was a lot, y'all. I feel like we went from this, like, like the two books that we read prior prior yeah. prior to this with Labyrinth Lost, where there was a female female romance, but it wasn't like ever like a point of contention. Like there was no like speculation, like, oh my God, what does yeah. this mean in terms of me? And then we had the Sorcerer of the Wild Deeps where it was <laughs> like, taboo in the land <laughs> True, to the point where it was like almost never depicted in the book. Yeah. And this is kind of like the not necessarily happy medium, but it's kind of between the two where it yeah. is like this taboo thing but it's such a big deal yeah yeah there's something about that forbidden love that's just oh my god especially if it's cool it yep um no yeah i i literally wrote in my notes even before like the scene when they were discovered i wrote i'm crying already i think i was just crying from the <laughs> Me too. Yeah. I think you like really root for them, even though you you know that the catalyst yeah. for the for the like whole plot is them getting discovered and pushed away from each other. I know. Yeah. And like Can I hoping... say... oh, yeah, go ahead. Wait, hold on, no, no. You you do yours, I'll remember mine. Oh, I was just saying that I was hoping they wouldn't catch them. I was like, please, please, like begging. Mm -hmm. but, like, we knew that from the beginning. Yeah. Okay, so to get controversial for a second. Okay. RC, controversial. I know. I like, as a wise philosopher once said, 
You know, no, 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 I'm not going to go into that. Okay. No, 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 no. no. Go, go for it. The thought. Just like the thought. Okay. So, you know how, like... No, no, no. As a wise philosopher once said, complete the thought. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I forgot the line. It's gone from my head. That's why I'm, like, moving on. Because, like, it slipped. <laughs> I'll complete it later, abruptly, out of nowhere. Okay. Okay. So... Y'all know how, like, a bunch of, like, okay, so I don't want to get into, like, the politics of, like, problematic books and, like, things like this, but to get, oh. Oh. Well, Leah's out. Leah was Leah's like, no, I'm not having this conversation. I am not getting canceled. She said her internet is being dumb. Okay. I don't know what this means for the stream. Are we, does that mean that we're not on anymore? I think we're still live. Let me check. Because I guess it's probably connected to all of our internets. I guess so, but I can't pin comments or anything like that. So if we go a while... Oh, she's back. Oh, there she is. <laughs> she's back. <laughs> we panicked for nothing. <laughs> okay. What were you okay. saying, Marcy? So, to go, like, based off of how I've seen people talk about, like, this one other book, especially, like, my ex who really loved it. Okay, so y'all know the controversial queer book call me by your name. So I feel like this book is what call me by your name wants to be both lyrically romance wise, like all of the shit that it wants to talk about first loves, like going ahead in life, like all these different things, all these different lessons, people and like their past relationships, like people who have experienced pain or love through like religion and church, like all these different things. And I feel like this book does that so much better. And that's probably because it comes from one, an actual queer author, but two, a black queer author. And it's mm -hmm. so fucking well done. So yeah, that's, that's my. I, I see the points that you're making. And what my brain thought of when you said that was that this would make a really beautiful movie. Yes. It would. Yeah. Yes. It would be such a good movie. Yeah. The author is a filmmaker and she wanted to make a movie first. And then she, she decided have. to make it a book. I love I need, that. I need a movie. We could have had everything. My like favorite parts of the book were the parts where they were in the garden. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah. Firstly, because my, like, I have a dad who's, like, very, very into gardening. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> my dad, like, when we, um, when we lived in South Carolina and had, like, a massive backyard, would grow, like, peppers and, like, eggplants and, like, a bunch of stuff. Like, we had, like, a lemon tree. And so that part of it was, like, I loved that a lot. <laughs> mm -hmm. I had loved so much about this book. <laughs> Me too. I think... <laughs> All of my favorite scenes were anything having to do with Queenie. I love Queenie. I love Queenie. I love Queenie. I love Queenie. Cause I feel like I'm very drawn to that kind of like, like older woman who's just like wizened and like, she just knows everything, but she doesn't reveal everything. <laughs> oh <That's> God. <laughs> Bye. Bye. I'm out. <laughs> It's nice showing you guys. It's we had a good, good live. <laughs> Queenie is iconic. Yeah, okay, is. I feel like Queenie is how mentor characters want to be written, and a mm -hmm. lot of people don't know how to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because, like, even from, like, the first introduction of Queenie, you feel like, okay, yeah, this is someone that you can rely on, someone you can trust, someone who's going to, like help steer the main character, but is also very much their own person who has had a lived life. Like they're not just there for plot. Yeah. Maybe it was just because of the way that she's described as like kind of doing that like medicinal magic, but she reminded me a lot of, um, Leah, you've read Clap When You Land, right? Mm -hmm. Like she reminded me a lot of the Tia in Clap When mm -hmm. You Land. Oh, that is true. Yeah. Or see, not having red clap when you land. <laughs> I do love the dads in this book. The dads I really love all yeah. the like family relationship dynamics. Mm -hmm. I thought for a minute Leah was gonna say that all the family members were fantastic, and I was like, oh, like 
<laughs> There's one I can think of. No. <laughs> I like how how to how to say. Um I love the fact that we get two very different but very like authentic like kind of queer exploration narratives in the main characters mm -hmm. because on one side okay so i feel very much like mabel's is kind of like your more typical expected like why one like um oh like uh her family isn't like the most religious but like she doesn't know she can come out to them and i do like the fact that that's there too because like even if your parents are liberal or have liberal beliefs mm -hmm. you don't always know if they're gonna support this mm -hmm. when it comes to someone that's their own family mm -hmm. yeah. and so i like that aspect and then we have audrey's which is also like this like very conservative like very like religious driven like oh you can't be like this because of that. But mm -hmm. what I like the most about that, and I think sets it apart from a lot of the other religious narratives is Queenie and how she kind of acts like a foil for like conservative institutionalized religion. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Cause she's very like spiritual. She has all these different beliefs and she's been teaching it to Audrey all this time. So it's like, it, because sometimes, like, some of these narratives, like, some of the, like, coming out, like, conservative narratives always feel like sometimes they're anti-religion, which I think is, uh, I mean, it's up to, like, whoever, and not everyone's religious, not everyone needs to be. Mm -hmm. But I think there's definitely a difference between, like, being anti-religion and then exploring, like, bad parts of institutionalized mm -hmm. religion. But yeah, yeah, like, I love how they really explored that on the side of Audrey's story. And honestly, I think like of the story, Audrey's was probably my favorite. I feel like she had like, there was just so much there. I think it was the spiritualism. She had mm -hmm. such a distinct voice too. Mm -hmm. Like I really felt like with her narration, I could hear somebody speaking in my head. Yeah. Because you can I felt hear like her like, colloquialisms and they're written on the page. Arce, you were listening to the audiobook. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like I could hear her the whole time. Oh my God. <laughs> I also love Audrey because I'm very familiar with the immigrant experience. Mm -hmm. And I feel like there was something there that I could connect to. Yeah. Also, I feel like I'm very, I'm very used to seeing Latinx immigrant experiences, mm -hmm. and not from any other perspective. So that was super fun. Mm. I just e found when I wrote in my notes, uh, in all caps, I'm emo because it was <laughs> every time I look out at water, um, I will be at church with you. I don't want to <laughs> listen to that again. Oh yeah, <laughs> I, I put that in the thread. I like. I just, I felt that line. I fucking felt that line. Mm -hmm. It's so, it's fucking simple as shit and it means so fucking much. Yeah. No, yeah, like yeah. it really, it takes all of the context and the weight of the book and it just holds it. <sighs> yeah. I think that's why I like that. I just really love that. Mabel's. Like Wait, I, I liked the dual perspectives Specific, like specifically for when we get Mabel's interactions with um, what's his name? Oh, oh. Leah's gone again. Bye, Leah. <laughs> Bye, Leah. We'll miss you. Keep going, Sarah. Oh, so, uh, what was the 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 um guy who went to jail for or, or went to prison? for like he got wrongfully convicted for um killing his friend the the author no yeah what was his name i yeah. blink i don't know how to pronounce it but it's a u f i i yeah i can't remember for the life of me but like i really liked mabel's interactions and the um and the letters mm -hmm. that they sent back and forth for each, yeah. like, for each other yeah i yeah, yeah. But also the end confused me. <laughs> I 
love the ending so Me too. much. Mm-hmm. Me too. So I got confused. I didn't think they were going to do something like that. Like, I legitimately thought that it was just going to, like, be something that, like... Because, okay, so, like, I have a weird relationship with how to categorize this novel because I don't like the idea of categorizing it as something like magical realism or stuff like that because it's so authentic and real. And also, as someone from the South who has grown up with a lot of superstitious beliefs and shit like mm-hmm. that. Like, mm-hmm. I, I like uh, I feel very, I don't know, like th- everything about this, even the weird fucking shit, I don't know, it just felt like so fucking authentic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I saw someone categorize yeah. this as like a supernatural paranormal Ooh, romance. Love you too. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, see, I'm not sure how to categorize it because there's like up until a point where it remains like a completely normal contemporary novel, in my opinion. Yep. Um, until they start doing the Dreamo therapy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And she starts having the visions. And like up until that point, it to me, it is a completely normal contemporary novel. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then that starts happening and you're like... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, like, I've seen some, like, weird fucking shit in my family, Mm -hmm. so, like, for me, like, it, like, I mean, because it's definitely, it's, I still would not call it, like, a typical contemporary with those parts in it, because obviously it very much isn't, Mm -hmm. but, like, it's just, I don't know. I don't know how to, how to describe. I just really love it. Yeah. Yeah. I like the fact, though, that it does take a lot of these risks because, like, it is marketed as a contemporary. Mm-hmm. Like, it's sold as a contemporary. Like, at work, we have it categorized straight up as just, like, contemporary. Because contemporary. Well, um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't shelve it. I wouldn't put it in fiction and fantasy or, like, uh, in sci-fi fantasy. Yeah. Because, mm-hmm. like, it's it really, it really isn't. Like, yeah. So, like, it's just... I like the fact that like it takes all these risks and it's very much a part of the story from like you you can't tell this story without that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah. Yeah. I can see why it got the Coretta Scott King honor. Um, yeah. Our first our first honor honor nomination read thing. <laughs> A milestone. <laughs> okay, so both this and Monday's Not Coming mm-hmm. were both, like, nominated for this. And I'm like, am I going to go through and read everything that's, like, won this? I might this also show? have a lot to do of that. Really stuff that has been nominated for the Credit Scott King Award. I'm going to look up a, a list, because why not? Yeah. Because okay. Monday's Not oh. I'm going to read that. I'm going to read that. <laughs> It's so good. The audiobook is excellent. Yeah. Monday's not coming beginning this month for me, and then this one ending the month for me feels like just like just the right. Tristan right. Strong Punch is a hole in the sky was nominated. Ooh. Okay. Um Sulway by Bastia Harrison. Um I'm trying to think of just stuff that like or I'm trying to look at stuff that I recognize the name of. Hidden figures. Um oh. The hate you get. Oh yeah. Um. Oh, all American boys. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not surprised. I still like that. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah, I want like to go back to like a small point that we made earlier. I want Mm -hmm. to go and buy the physical of this one Mm -hmm. to mark it up now. Yeah. Like, there are so many things in it that, from a writer's perspective, I'm like, oh, my God, let me break you down and examine you. Because holy Mm -hmm. fucking shit. Yeah. I, like, yeah, there were points where, like, I I gave the clearly the lowest rating out of any of us. Mm -hmm. But I just think that was because there were points where the plot lost to me. But at Mm -hmm. no point did I think the writing was, like, boring at all. Because I think the writing is really, really beautiful. Mm -hmm. It was the plot that lost me a little bit. 
Yeah. Sarah is sounding a bit like a hater right now. And <laughs> you know what, Sarah? You know what, Sarah? I can't trust someone who doesn't give books five out of five stars. Yes. I don't trust ratings that aren't five out of five. Oh my god. It's it's fine. I'm full of hate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I will say the plot did like lose me a little bit at certain mm -hmm. times, but like I was so blown away by other parts. Like, here's the thing the romance in the first part of the book, as soon as that happened, I was like, this is a five star read. Like, unless, <laughs> unless, know. unless this book is bad, this is a five star read. See, um, Archie had us all worried the last time we did our live show because he would just be like, I've just heard that it's kind of middling. <laughs> Okay, I'm so fucking confused about that because, like, I looked at, like, my Goodreads and mm -hmm. a lot of people who I'm mutuals with, like, do have, like, lower ratings for it, but, like, the overall average is high and then my experience while reading it was high and then when I posted my it on Twitter... <laughs> <laughs> But like also when I posted it on Twitter, like, so many people, like, either yeah, commented or DM'd. <laughs> So good. Wait, they're working on a hidden figures musical. What? That's what RJ says. I hope musical? they I hope they cast Scarlet. She'd be good. I need to leave. I need to exit. The bibliophiles has become a three person group. <laughs> Ooh, they can get Aquafina too. Aquafina, Aquafina, my queen, come in with your black scent. But then conveniently, the stop, stop, my queen. <laughs> mm -mm. I did not know they were making that a musical. That's an interesting. Either. That's gonna be interesting. Mm -hmm. Are they still going to be able to do it, though, right now? Because, I mean, like, with the... I don't the... think they're going to be doing it now. <laughs> they're probably, like... like, developing it. Wait, do you mean because of coronavirus or because... Yeah. I mean, it depends on who's making it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Oh, um, another quote that I wrote down was... Um, something that audrey was thinking and it was and i um and i say it to me for me i love you audrey you are safe because that just made me like mm, self self-care self-love that whole paragraph like that section where she's just hyping herself up mm -hmm. like, if you can't love yourself how in the hell do you love somebody else Honestly, like, thinking back on it, I don't think I ever remember a part in this story where, like, Audrey has self-doubts, just mm -hmm. more, like, how people are affecting her, but never how she looks at herself. Like, I I don't remember a single part in the story where she is thinking negative about herself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. You know what, Sasha? I have, a, I have a quote for you. I have the quote when she goes, Ah! <laughs> I got it. What are you I have it. <laughs> Hold on, I have it. <laughs> it's the bit where they're she's at the waterfall with um Jazzy, with, right? With Jazzy and she goes, where is it? RC sent it to the chat earlier. <laughs> 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 Yo, I, okay, so so I have both the audio book and the, the ebook. So I'm there, I'm listening to it. Like, and around this time, like I'm eating like my food, because obviously, like I'm trying to eat something before we get to the live. So I take my eyes off of the book and I'm just like, <laughs> my own business. And then I hear this part and I turn around and I looked and I was sure that that was just in my head. I was like, oh well, I guess it's daily screaming time already. But like I checked and then I just see it and I listened again and I started fucking laughing. It's such a serious part. It's not comedic at all, but the way that it just comes out. <laughs> like I was just like, I am a terrible person. This is a very emotional moment. How many takes in the recording booth do you think that <laughs> Wait, is the, is the book narrated by the author? 
The book is narrated by three people. So the author is one of them, and then there is another woman, and then there's a dude who does the author portions. Okay, wait, so does does the author do Mabel or Audrey? Uh, Mabel. Audrey oh. has a different uh, voice actor. Oh, wow. Yeah, so it's a full cast audiobook, and okay, so I'm gonna say- I love a full cast audiobook. I'm gonna I say something real so controversial right now. Go ahead. Oh, God. I don't like full cast audiobooks. The Are only you? the only exception other you than You better be book, saying this seven husbands of Evelyn Hugo. I, I still haven't read it. And honestly, that's the only reason I, I have not looked <gasps> into it. Why I'm probably gonna do it physically, because I'm like, I don't think it's gonna be a good idea to do it. The audiobook is way better. In defense of the seven husbands of Evelyn Hugo, it's not technically full cast. Mm -hmm. There's just you only you literally only get um what's the main character's name? Monique. Yeah, you get Monique's like point of view from when she's interviewing Evelyn Hugo, and then you get Evelyn Hugo's point of view from when she's being Evelyn Hugo. Yeah. Okay, see, I don't like think that that okay, so when it's like a dual point of view like that, I don't really think of it as like full cast because I've read things with like dual point of views. Yeah. It has more than one person. Like, okay, I didn't like Odd One Out by Nick Stone. I didn't really care for Let Me Hear a Rhyme, even though I really like, okay, so like I did and didn't like it. Like I Wait, I, I love I love the audios, but I know <laughs> that when there's more than like two narrators, I don't know. There's something about it that other than this book, I just have a bad track record with. For me, it helps me like differentiate between the characters and really know like and differentiate between the point of views. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, I'm I've been doing the um because I reread so when I read Aurora Rising last year, I just read it physically. Um, but when I reread it, I just listened to it. And for me, because it has a full cast audio, but it's like the chapters are done by the character whose point of view it is. Mm. It was really helpful having that full cast just so you could hear whose head you were in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Can I just say that I love that for once, I'm not the one defending Evelyn. It was Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> you had to pass the torch eventually. Sarah's so phone is in the full cast audio, so there was nothing to defend there. I am so proud. <laughs> I mean, like, I, truly. Like, Obviously, full cast audiobooks are good. It's just like, I think it just, I have such a bad track record with them that now mm -hmm. I'm trying to actively avoid them. Mm -hmm. Like, this is yeah. the only, other than the Star Wars books that I've listened to, this has been the only one with a yeah. full, like, cast audio that I have been like five out of five. And, like, no, all, the, like, oh, all the other audios have been good, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't listen to Daisy Jones then. Yeah, no, I've already Daisy read. Jones. No, oh. I feel like that the the cat the fact that it was a full cast audiobook and that it was done so well was the only redeeming factor for Daisy Jones for me. That's well, true. it's okay. We're all entitled to our wrong opinions. I'm sorry, but Sarah is a hundred percent right. You know so. what? I'm gonna write a song about both of you. What's it gonna be called, RC? Go for it. Oh, it's gonna be called um um from. <laughs> Twinkle <laughs> with Louver? <laughs> it's pronounced Louvre. Oh, with Louvre. Yeah, that's what it's <laughs> You know, like the museum in Paris. <laughs> Andy says, I still haven't read Daisy Jones, which I, I also it. have not read, read Daisy Jones. And no. RJ asked, is Daisy Jones good? I'm, if you want to read... Oh, go ahead. Yeah, I'm unhauling my copy of Daisy Jones. Oh, wow. Is it hardcover? What? Yeah, it's a hardcover. Do you uh, do you want to give it to a a, a needy, a needy? <laughs> so, so because of the um the the best friend soulmate bond that we have, Isa gets first pick of all my unhauls. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I'll let no. Isa go through it first, and then I'll I'll send it to the chat. Not be about the DM. <laughs> <laughs> No, I sent I I sent the um like I uh, what was I doing like I went through my thing a couple of nights ago and I was just like okay I'm unhauling this I'm unhauling that and I sent the thing to Iza and I was like you can like you know when you come by next time you can like go through these and see what you want and I could literally see Iza typing and I went other than the edition of City of Brass <laughs> 
I'm getting bank for that one. I paid a whole Please $11. Do. For it. Please read Evelyn Hugo. I am begging you. You Just have to do read it. Evelyn. Just do it. Do it. Do it. Sarah, you're my favorite child right now. I love you so much. <laughs> I also haven't read it yet, but I will be reading it soon. I am. Look, I'll read it whenever the audiobook comes in from my library. It's still like several weeks away. You're not on <laughs> Scribd? Okay, same. Is it on Scribd? I think it's on Scribd. Yeah, it's on Scribd. Yeah. Do you want me to send you my link so that way you, you can already did? I already signed up through you. I'll send it again so I can use it. <laughs> okay, but like to be fair, like at one point, either this month or the last month, I can't remember which. I did a second script and I don't think I ever canceled it because they took away something that I wanted to listen to. So I created another one for a free trial and I think it charged me. So technically right now I have two scripts. So that means I have two links. <laughs> that means you get charged $14.99 or what is it? $9.99 a month? Uh, $9.99 a month. So I got charged like $20 oh. NBD right now. I mean, right now it's NBD because I have a lot of savings. So it's like, oh, I charge. Like if it were like four months ago, like I would have been like, oh yeah. fuck, oh fuck. No, oh, fuck. there was a there was a period Ooh. of time from like mid May to the beginning of July right. where I did not get paid because my unemployment wasn't coming through. So, mm -hmm. watching all of those Spotify payments go through was fun. Oh, <laughs> that's yeah. Oh, <laughs> I felt that. I physically felt that. It's great. It's great. Yep. I misread Reagan's quote as my lich king. <laughs> and I was like, is that like a you know, like a Lord of the Rings thing? <laughs> a Did lich I is actually that? a thing in like Dungeons and Dragons. Oh. Le Leonai's minds went to the same place. <laughs> Okay, but Loki, this book did make me, um, okay, so like I, I've grown up listening to Whitney before, but I went online and okay, so Folklore dropped and I bought the cassette of Folklore and do I you have a have a, do, you ha do you have a cassette player? I have a cassette player. I, I actually collect cassettes. I just haven't done this in a while. So I also went and got a few other cassettes and one of the things I got was a Whitney cassette. So I was like, I okay, that. so. I remember when everybody like lost their marbles over the fact that M Marvel was doing the cassette for um, Guardians, Guardians of the Galaxy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I almost bought that and I'm like, I'll get that maybe in a couple of months. I'll see if they have like a sale on it later because she's expensive. It's only like $8. Is but it? I'm waiting to see if it goes down further. Yeah, it dropped. It used to be like 20 before. Now it's 8 uh, Okay, yeah. I haven't listened to folklore yet. Me either. See, I'll do what I always do with, like, Taylor albums, and I'll, like, hear the singles on the radio a couple of times, and then, like, in two years' time, I'll start listening <laughs> to it. Like, no, so the only reason I started listening to Reputation um, was because I saw, so in my, like, Spotify recommended a cover of I Did Something Bad um, that was done by Shoshana Bean and um, uh, Cynthia Arrivo came up. And it was just so beautiful that I was like, I have to listen to the original now. Okay, so as a Cynthia Revo stan. It's so good, RC. I have not heard it, and I'm going to need to go listen to it. Yeah. I've only seen her in, like, two movies, but oh my fucking god. Like, she just fucking... I want her to cut me in half. She was the... Um, so the year that Hamilton was nominated for like that record breaking amount of Tonys. Mm -hmm. That was the first year I ever watched the Tonys. See, I'd watched the Tonys before, but um, essentially it came down to like, they were nominated for a record breaking amount of Tonys. Mm -hmm. And then they were about to break the record for the most Tonys ever like won in one night. Um, and it came down to the best actress, like in a musical nomination and it like um what was her name philippa sue was nominated but it went to cynthia arrivo for the color purple as it should have been rc <laughs> your laugh kills me i love rc's laugh you know what? no rc and victoria have the best laughs i love yeah. the color laugh 
Just the way that RC's laugh will just get into very like giggly and then like he'll go out of frame. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. Uh, are you? <laughs> that being said, we stand Cynthia. I love Cynthia Revo. I didn't actually know that she was like on Broadway until the other day. Okay, so I recently watched Orange is the New Black, mm -hmm. and one of the actresses from it, Daniel Brooks, like she has a bunch of music on Spotify. Well, I say a bunch, she has like four songs. Um, but she's also one of the like cast members in one of the like years of The Color Purple. And it was the one that Cynthia was also in. Yeah. And I saw that and I was like, wait, what? <laughs> and then it made sense. Cause the first movie I saw Cynthia in, she's a singer. And I was mm -hmm. like, oh, so she's one of them Broadway people. <laughs> One of them Broadway, One of them Broadway people. <laughs> In like Look. 10 years time, that's what we're going to be saying about Leah. <laughs> yeah. oh, I'm not an Broadway. actor. No, I'm not you're act. you're going to be doing your um backstage things. <laughs> Leah, do, do only actors exist on Broadway? <laughs> like, <laughs> is it like, just actors? Like, like, musicians um, never get famous. Yeah, and? You'll be the first one. You can still win a Tony. <laughs> Leah, you're gonna get best, nominated for a Tony in that same year. Lighting. There we go. I did it. I okay, here's the thing though. The Tony is for lighting design, and I don't do design. Okay. You will that year. You will that year. <laughs> you have time. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They don't they don't give you they don't give Tonys for like spotlights? No. <laughs> Ooh, right. They don't even they don't even show the acceptance speeches of the designers during okay. the Tonys. It's it's Get very it. frustrating as a technician that Wait. like the Tonys aren't live. It's no, like Tonys it's like any other award show where they have like the commercial breaks and they'll speed through some of the acceptance speeches and the acceptance speeches they always choose to speed through or show like a very short clip of are always the design. Yeah. But, yeah. By phobia. Right. Like I think with the Oscar, sometimes I even give them out ahead of time, and they're just like, "These people won." <laughs> Not Leah Michelle. Not Leah Michelle. Not Leah Michelle. <laughs> no, no. See, Leah is gonna make her debut appearance as an actor mm -hmm. in West Side Story. No. Mm -mm. No thanks. Our funny girl. No. No thanks. Our wicked. I I hate it here. <laughs> oh my god, no, Leah, you could uh, be in uh, Spring Awakening. With Jonathan Groff. <laughs> Spring Awakening slaps. We went super off topic from the book. <laughs> I know we did. It just happens every time, though. It's just it does. Good. I did do have another note that I wrote down if okay. we want to go back. I mean, if you want to detract from the fact that you're going to win a lighting design Tony. <laughs> mm -hmm, that's definitely going to happen. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, I just wrote in all caps, the impact of reading, um, because I loved like just her like reading that book and yes. how much of an effect that had on like her life. And also like that her friends started reading it and everything too. No, like the book, it feels like a love letter to a bunch of different things. And mm -hmm. one of the things it felt like a love letter to was books itself and the power mm -hmm. that they hold. Like, yeah. and I mean, ironic coming from a book that is incredibly powerful. Because mm -hmm. certain other books sometimes try and do it. They're like, they, they try to do it and it just comes off as like pretentious. And in this one, it's like, yes, tell me more. I... I just like it, it it felt real so much of this book just felt like it was drawing from the author's personal experiences mm -hmm. and it just felt like a really really like truly personal book yeah. and I feel like everybody has had that book in their life where you're like okay yeah I've read books before but this is like impact yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah the author said that she wrote this book for herself for her younger self mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when she said powerful books is like, I'm not writing this for anybody else. This is yeah. me. And when I heard yeah. that, I started bawling. 
Well, like, okay, so I recently read Mirage, and I've been listening to a lot of the interviews from Zamaya Duad. And in one of the, like, um, panels, somebody asked her, like, they were talking about, like, YA and adult and, like, writing for people. And she was like, well, at the end of the day, I write for teen me. I write for, like, what I wanted, like, mm -hmm. what I would have liked to have seen. And I'm like, my queen. And I feel that, because, like, I feel like it's always different. Like if you're someone who was marginalized in some way and you're yeah. a writer, you mm -hmm. typically write for what you either currently want to see or what you would have wanted to have seen. Mm -hmm. growing up. It just depends on like where you write. Like if you write adult fantasy, obviously you're not gonna be like, this is what I wanted to read as a teen, probably. Mm -hmm. But like, if you're writing like why, it's gonna be like, what would I have loved to have seen as a fucking teen? Yeah, that's the thing is that like I, have kind of reached this point in life where I've grown up, not, not necessarily grown out of YA contemporary, because I think you can read anything at any, like, age. Yeah. But it's, like, it's just something that I'm reading a lot less of unless I have, like, a distinct reason, like this live show. Yeah. Um, but I'm also at the point where, like, any single, like, any time an Arab author or a Muslim author comes out with something, I'm like, I got to read that. I have to, because yeah. it's, like, it's like something I would have wanted to see at that yeah. age. Mm -hmm. And it's like something I didn't get to experience. So I have to experience it for the sake of my younger self. Yeah. yeah. Oh, another thing I really liked, I wrote down a quote about um, when they were discussing like life and death. And I think this mm -hmm. is from the letter that the author writes. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, I guess life has a lot of little deaths before we leave this planet officially. And I was just like. Yeah. Like. <sighs> I wanna cry. <laughs> I the cried several oh. times reading this book. Same. I did not cry except for one part. And I think it's because up until the end, I legitimately really thought it was going to do something different. And I'm really glad it didn't. Okay. Mm -hmm. So to go based off of my own personal experience. So back in 2018 in summer, my dad was diagnosed with cancer mm -hmm. and then he passed away in December. And when the diagnosis happened in this book, I almost sent y'all a message saying I was not going to be able to read this mm -hmm. <laughs> because it started to bring back memories and the way that it was written and like the way that it is made me actually start to get very emotional and tear up. Mm -hmm. And like, I actually did almost cry then. And then like, I took like a five hour nap and then like, I woke up again and I continued reading it. And from that point onward in the back of my head, the whole time I was like, this book is going to do this. This book is going to do this. And then it didn't do that. Like the thing that I was expecting usually from this type of narrative, like mm -hmm. I thought it was kind of trauma porn and mm -hmm. yeah. trauma porn can be done well but i legitimately thought that's what it was going to be up until the end so because of that i think that's why i didn't actually cry i got very yeah. fucking emotional at times but yeah. yeah yeah i like i don't know if this is just me being dumb and obtuse but i did not know that this was a cancer book me either I knew there was something to do with like an illness because I had seen mm -hmm. like something about that in a trigger warning, but yeah, I didn't know like how um, how much of the book was going to be focused around it, and I didn't know it had to do with cancer. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So also, and it's I, like I like I I recently lost like a member of my extended family to cancer, mm -hmm. so it yeah. was rough to read. Yeah. And if you, if either of you had wanted to DNF it, I like I would have understood. Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, Val and I DNF last month. So <laughs> that was not that good of a reason. That was less so. valid and that was less understandable, okay? I'm really glad though that I didn't DNF this just because like, even though like, cause it started, it started to get that way. But like, I'm glad that I took that break. I slept on it. Mm -hmm. I woke up and I continued it just because like, it is a very non-trauma porn book. Like it just yeah. explores all these different things. And I really like the fact that like, at first I thought the ending was gonna end in a way to where it was like, we don't really know like yeah. what happened. Like there's still more to tell or, oh, like we're not gonna like, we're not gonna show like the final parts of it. But instead it ended in that way that it ended. Mm -hmm. And that was- Confusing to me personally. <laughs> I mean, I get that. I yeah. like it's 
because I mean it was. I, I mean, who fucking saw that shit coming? <laughs> who thought? Oh yeah. <laughs> I was left feeling like, so around the time, so, okay, so I liked the idea that she was using her, like, make a wish to try to get um, Afua out of prison. Yeah, Sarah, that's political. Stop. <laughs> Shut up. Um, and then, and then when it like when they were like, "Oh, we'll give you like six hours at Coney Island," I was mad. <laughs> I, was mad about that. I was like, "She wants to get him out of prison because he's also <laughs> convicted of killing his friend, mm -hmm. and you're giving them a couple of hours at a theme park." No, 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 not a theme park. Coney Island. Oh, You're not Island. hearing yourself. You're not hearing yourself. Six hours at Coney Island. Oh, wait, does it I did too. <laughs> I, was, I was really confused for a second also because, so I was reading that section. Yes. Um... <laughs> And when we had already we had started the stream we hadn't gone live yet but sarah had joined the stream and i was like don't talk to me i'm finishing the book yeah. and i was just like staring at my phone reading and i was and i was trying to like read fast so because i like in the book i thought there were more pages left than um there were because of like the acknowledgements and stuff yeah. so i was really worried about finishing on time so i was reading really fast and that happened and i was like what <laughs> <laughs> they just what just happened I had to like go through it. I had to read that like last couple of pages twice because the first time I was like, <laughs> <laughs> and then the second time I was like, okay, I guess. All right. <laughs> I'm still like, confused, but I understand, and I'm less mad about the six hours going on. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, but Sarah, like, if you had to choose between being free or six hours at Coney Island, like, come on. I mean, I think we all know what you're going to go for. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Dude, it fucking pissed me off, though. Like, when like when there was that whole scene about, like, the wish part and she was talking about it, I was just like, it's so funny how, like, white people and like rich people will be like oh my god you're dying let me help you get your wish you want to go to disney world like oh what do you want to go see the world do you want to meet a celebrity i want to set free an innocent incarcerated man <laughs> you <laughs> and then they ask her and then they ask her if her parents put her up to it right <laughs> yeah. as if like a teenager can't care about that <laughs> like it's it just it's so it fascinating my mind, truly like that response, it's such a short response, but it speaks so much fucking privilege. And yeah. it speaks so much about what that person was thinking. And like also, how is someone being like imprisoned political? <laughs> like, how is someone's livelihood political? Listen, also, I gotta say, as an aside, because the entire time I was like, okay, this takes place in Minneapolis, but I'm so used to like New York centered narratives mm -hmm. that when every single time they were talking about like the garden or like how large the apartment was, I was like, how could they afford this? <laughs> in New York. <laughs> and then I was like, oh wait, they live in Minnesota. It's fine. <laughs> Sarah, it's only 62,000 a month. Like, it's not that big a deal. <laughs> My dad said, stop that. <laughs> Can we talk about um, the meaning of C-H-U-R-C-H, -H, church? Oh. Because I was bawling my eyes out at that oh. part. That felt like a fucking Hailey Kiyoko lyric. I was like, all right. <laughs> yeah. Hailey Kiyoko again. Oh. <laughs> Is that it? But here's the thing. Here's my thing. I feel like Audrey never gets closure, like on either end. No, it wasn't. <laughs> RJ, RJ, no, it wasn't. It was in no. Minneapolis. The only part that was in New York was, was Coney Island. Island. <laughs> <laughs> Three hours in Coney Island. Three hours. Does the does the Make a Wish people like pay for the ticket and stuff too? Yeah, they're supposed to. Okay. Yeah. 
Not Look, they're, they can they can afford like a trip around the world, okay? They can't get someone out of prison, but they can tr they can put out the money for the trip, okay? Also, there's another bit where like the they call so they call Mabel's parents, and her parents are like, she doesn't want to wish, and her, and she pokes her head out and she goes, yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, though, if my parents were like, she doesn't want to wish, I'd be like. Did you ask me? Did you ask? <laughs> I wasn't aware you were the one with the illness. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Audrey's story is very open ended on purpose, though. Yeah. I still wanted to see her happy, though. And I feel, I mean, she's not oh. unhappy, and I feel like she's growing still mm -hmm. and like learning. Like, I'm very glad she was comfortable being with her dad. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they reached this point where they were like truly like father daughter, um, but I just wanted to see her like have a happy <laughs> 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 bye. Oh, oh god. <laughs> Oh, I love it here. I'm what sorry. are you saying, Sarah? <laughs> I don't this point. <laughs> you were talking about Audrey and her dad. I wanted her to be happy. Yeah. yeah I, I am glad that we saw her, like, make other queer friends. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> oh, speaking of that, when she comes out to Jassy, mm -hmm. yes. I was also a mess because I could feel like her pain of wanting to say something like, oh, I'm also queer, but also like, like drawing the line. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it just made me so emo. I was, no. It had so many like depictions of people coming out and like mm -hmm. the kind of continual process that it is for people. Yeah. Yeah. And like how sometimes even if you are among people who are like you, you don't you can't necessarily say. Yeah. Yeah. And I just felt like again, it was just one of those things where it was just a really realistic narrative, in my opinion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I don't want to call it magical realism because it isn't necessarily magical realism. Yeah. But the magical aspects aside, it was such a realistic narrative. Yeah. Like, I love the fact that Queenie just already knew. Like, she's known the entire mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. And, like, she let, like, um, like even when, like, she knew something was going on, like, she yeah. wasn't going to pry into Audrey's life. Like, mm -hmm. she was like, you'll come to mm -hmm. me when yeah. you want to. Yeah. And I, I really liked that. Because, like, since she's such, like, an enlightened spiritual person, mm -hmm. like, she's able to see everyone without, like, any bias. Mm -hmm. And I like that with um the dad too, like the mm -hmm. fact that the whole time in the book you thought like he didn't know why she yeah. um was sent to the yes. US and then he knew the whole time and he was just like letting her be her. Yeah. Yeah, he was like like he just he literally said that he wanted her to do it on her own time and I just mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah. yeah. Did you guys listen to the playlist at the end of the book? There was a playlist. I yeah. know, you know I finished this book 10 minutes before. Yeah, I, I've heard a few of those songs like just on their mm -hmm. own, but I haven't listened to the playlist. I wonder, there might be one on Spotify. Let me check. I had no idea there was a playlist. Yeah. I, saw, I saw the word acknowledgements. I stopped reading. I was like, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Val, is that why you were talking last night about hating creating like book playlists? I found it. Oh. But so this is the author's actual playlist for the um for the book. Yeah. So we've got Consideration by Rihanna featuring SZA. Mm -hmm. My Love Is Your Love by Winnie Houston. Everything Is Everything by Lauren Hill. Mm -hmm. This is a bop. I love that. Um, Pop Life by Prince. So Afraid by Janelle Monae. Mm -hmm. The White by Frank Ocean. Concrete Jungle by Bob Marley. Lucy by Destra. Scenario by a, co a tribe called Quest. Um, Tempe to Tempo by Lizzo. Um, Butterflies by Flow a Tree. Thieves in the Night by Black Star. Between Us Two by Shafi Hussein. Um, Your House by Steel Pulse. Pelas Sombras by Arthur. I can't pronounce that. Superwoman by Stevie Wonder. 
Um, Killing Me Softly by the Fugees. So Emotional by Whitney Houston. This is long. Yeah. Does it's anyone just... else feel uncomfortable with the fact that there's not enough white artists in that playlist? <laughs> <laughs> I want to leave this. Exit. <laughs> Exit. <laughs> You remind me of that bird meme that's like, I am uncomfortable when we are not about that <laughs> I post that regularly. Of course that's me. <laughs> that's how you can tell RC is the baby of the family. Mm -hmm. I, I'm used to having a spotlight on me. Yeah. And it's really weird when like other people are getting attention. I'm like, I I'm... I'm I'm here. Do y'all not see? Like, am I invisible right now? Like, did I finally tap into that ability? Is this my latent X Men? <laughs> <laughs> Charles Xavier, where you at? Is this because, like, I ate like an almond milk smoothie? Like, did I finally, like, ascend? Like, <laughs> an almond milk smoothie. An almond, an almond milk, milk with wheat. I like to talk about the phrase, I ate an almond milk smoothie. <laughs> <laughs> you ate it? You ate it. You can eat anything. I, 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 I can eat I water. Am I this water? Yes. I mean, you're not, but I could eat it. No, I know. Okay. Look, all eating is is a lot of chewing and a lot of swallowing. So all you have to do is chew and then just swallow. How can you chew water? It's, unless you, it's ice. No, don't if talk. You, no, 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 no. No, no, no. no, no, no. no. Ew. <laughs> Stop. Why? No. I no. Goodbye. That was a good bite. Good chew. It's, it's because of this. I'm just saying. Where? No. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> I can't. Oh, it's my gosh. All right. Is there anything else we want to talk about before we wrap up? Um, oh, so our book for next month is Felix Ever After by Kason Callender. Mm -hmm. Should be a fun time. Yeah. Three of us have read it. Guess who hasn't? <laughs> Yay! <laughs> oh my god, Sarah, you're going to be frantically going through the pages before we start <laughs> live. Nobody talk to me. I'm reading. <laughs> I will finish that book before. No, you know what? I'm not making any promises. <laughs> Because last time I underestimated my overestimations. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then this time I will be, I don't know. Listen. If it helps, Felix is shorter than this one. Is it really? Because this was yeah. short. I finished this in a day. Like this oh, wow. one, like audio wise, Felix is about 30 minutes shorter. Um, So like. Is the audio book good? Is the audio book good? Yeah. Yeah. I, I like the audio a lot. Like that's how I did it. And um. I really like the performance in it. I will check it out then because it. I love them. I like audiobooks. Like Leah said earlier, are kind of the only way I'm getting through things. Me too. Really? Yeah. The only physical reading I'm doing right now is literally research. Granted, that's the only reading I'm doing right now. Mm -hmm. I had to temporarily postpone Sarathon because Sarathon project that I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The the reading rush put me into a slump. Oh no! <laughs> the reading rush puts everyone into a slump every <laughs> year. Like y'all, y'all, y'all do this to yourselves. <laughs> well, I didn't I'm know it's the daily vlog. The daily vlogging, and then like here's the thing: because in my last daily vlog, I like did a bunch of job searching and got really sad, <laughs> and then, like. <laughs> oh. I literally, you can see in my vlog as I get progressively sadder. As I'm like listening to Hades Town, so um, but apparently I can read audiobooks right now, and I'm slowly making my way through Little Women. See, every single time I've but, the only like successful vlogs I've ever uploaded on my channel have been the vlog where I read Call Down the Hawk, mm -hmm. and the vlog where I read Crescent the uh, Crescent City. And the issue is every single time I try to vlog, I always attempt to begin the vlog with an artsy shot of me like making my coffee or making tea or something like that. But then I realize there's a bunch of dishes in the sink and it all dissolves. Dude, 
That's why I straight up, like, with my vlog style, it's just me talking. Because, like, I tried to do that the first few times. And I would always catch something in the frame, like, that I didn't see the mm -hmm. first time. And I'm like, I'm not redoing this. And I can't, like, zoom in. Like. <laughs> so, yeah, now the vlogs are literally just me, like, talking mm -hmm. with, like, edits thrown in. Yeah, we are talking oh about how that is what we're talking Look about, Reagan. <laughs> it's time to go. <laughs> I don't think it is, though. I think Reagan has made points. We're not talking about that. I think we are, though. I think we are. Look, some people get very know. aesthetic right. with the vlogs. No. I tried, mm -hmm. but I. No. Like, the only aesthetic I go for now is like sometimes my outfits. Like, oh my God. Okay. So I bought a shirt. Mm -hmm. And it is a black H and M shirt with pink little flamingos on it. Yeah. And I think we already know what book that's gonna go for when I film a review when I read that book. Um, but like I, <laughs> I've been looking at certain clothing items, and my first thought is, oh, if I buy this, I can use it in this video. <laughs> and I'm like, no, okay. I know. Wait, where? So our group chat has talked about book con so many times at this point, where I go into a store and I'm like, what can I wear to book con? <laughs> <laughs> we have to be coordinated, honestly. I love you wear orange. No, I can't no, wear orange. orange. Orange looks really bad on me. I'm I'm too yeah, white. You have, to, you have to dye your hair. Okay, so we're all going to have a matching shirt in orange. Like, it's going to be, like, the group chat I shirt that we're all going to wear. <laughs> See, I would really love for us to do um, the matching, like, our matching pastel flag. Oh. Because I feel nice. like that would look really cute. Mm -hmm. Is if we just did matching pastel outfits. I know, uh, like, okay, if, like, BookCon is when me and Victoria finally meet up, we both bought the Taylor Swift cardigan. So we're both going to wear the Taylor Swift cardigan. Yes! <laughs> but if we meet before that slash after that, obviously that's when the cardigan matching will happen. See, was it Le Leah? Were you the one who said you might be coming to the All Fest? Uh, I probably won't end up doing yeah, it. Yeah, no, we were talking I'd... about it originally. It was like When you we were originally like... talking about it, before things got worse. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and we're only it'll in be, July. It'll be Y'all Fest 2021. Yes. Yeah. Because I don't think it's too far away from me. It's it's in Charleston, South Carolina. So okay. like that's like maybe eight hours away from you. Yeah. Yeah. But it'll depend on like uh, Liv. Also, because Liv could come to DC and get me then. That would be ideal. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Not Val saying I hate you, Ray. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So next month's book is Felix. Yeah. Our live show is the 29th. Yes. Yeah, I think so. Yes. 29th, 7 p.m. Unless we get delayed like we did this time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank right. you all for joining, and we'll see you next month. Bye. 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 I'm waving. <laughs>